With me today is Carl Dickob. Carl is an old friend. We don't see each other regularly, but we've been working together for over a decade. I think that's correct, Carl. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and Carl has the opportunity of living in a really nice part of Ontario. He's up around Kinmount, and he has a similar passion to fishing that I have, but in a different area. Carl, why don't you tell the viewers what your goals are and what you do? Well, I'm involved with fish since I'm 10 years old. I'm now 70, so I have quite a bit of experience, but mostly land-based fish farms. I joined the uh, old Ontario Aquaculture Association about 25 years ago, but this association broke up about seven years ago, so we had no a representation for land base, so I formed with the help of friends and lawyers a new association. What's the name of it? Fisheries Enhancement and Aquaculture Association. You know, one of our members here is the largest uh, uh, dealer fish farm supply. He can just do supply anything from the net to even a recycling system. Wow. And, but we need the support of the government. Of course. You know, because we are just in a way here in the beginning of fish farming that has been neglected for too long. Only studies, studies, studies. And no I action. think most of the government, which I think are honest people, but they get duped. Of course. You know, and well, that, I think they're listening. Fishing. I think they're listening. For sure. And you have to keep For your sure. stamina up and keep going because I believe you're going to achieve your goal. You know, for a few of the fish, I haven't been using my strike indicator. I've just been fishing on the bottom. And one of the nice things when you do that is to use a bait caster because you can finesse the line out. I call it feathering it out. I don't know if this fish is still going to be on there. He dropped it. How could he drop it? He was on there. I'm going to cast this back out. Because of the free spool on the bait caster, you know, if you let your minnow sink, I'm actually going to cast and just retrieve it slowly here. If I get a pickup on spinning reels, it's called a bait runner feature. There's a lever that if you leave the lever unengaged, with the fish hits when you're using live bait, it automatically can pull line out. But as soon as you crank the handle, it engages the bait runner and then it stops it. So then you can actually fight the fish and reel it in. So right now what I'm doing is just literally fishing the way most people do, just fishing with a small weight and a minnow and casting it out. And when it gets close to the bottom, lifting it up, you can drift if it's windy enough or you can use the current if you're into a current area. But if I have a pickup, instead of setting the hook right away because the water's cold, what I'm gonna do is hit the release on the reel so that the fish doesn't feel anything or minimal drag when he actually takes off with my bait. Until I think he's got the hook in his mouth, then I can set the hook. <clears throat> nice head shakes. <clears throat> you can't hear the drag because this bait caster doesn't have a clicker on it. You can see I'm putting lots of pressure on the fish. Good, he's just got the one little treble in his mouth again. I'm letting it fight, but in this cold water, you can see they're very sluggish. And I'm gonna try bringing it close. This is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna try landing it just with the leader. See if he falls off or not. I've got that heavier leader in case I get a monster fish on. So there, long lean fish. I think I need the pliers on this guy. So you notice that I have my tools very handy. Okay. Okay. I'm guessing that that fish is probably about 16, 17 inches. Notice that I don't have my hands anywhere near, near the gill plate. They're very sharp or the spines very sharp. That's actually one of the safest ways to hold a walleye. Just like that. We didn't have him out of the water long and he's going to take off. Normally when I pack my rods away, I put my hooks, even to put in the vehicle or in the boat, either on the reel in the case of a bait caster or on a hook keeper like we have here or on a guide. But when you're in a kayak, because you're so low to the water, if I had hooks here or even up here somewhere, because when I'm paddling, it's very easy to get hooks stuck in you. I put the hooks way up 
on the rod. Now this may sound like a silly tip, but if you're out in open water, trust me, you don't want to have hooks caught in you. So I've heard, okay? So if you notice here, when I'm ready to paddle, okay, and I've got one rod in the rod holder that's on the back of my seat, and I've, one is over here, one over here. So now when I paddle, my arms are free to move, or if I'm casting right and left. So it, it's a small tip, but it's very important. If you look here, even with the larger float, this is a 40 gram float that's designed for using large bait fish over six inches, like six to 12 inches, um, with a heavier weight and the same thing, that quick strike rig, you can see that the hooks are way up on the rod, away from me, okay? The other thing is, when I'm handling fish, and especially if I'm casting lures and I have a cradle on the side, you gotta remember that it's very easy to hook the cradle. So the last thing you want is to mess around and to get your hooks in it. So whenever I'm doing stuff, I try to keep my hook, especially if I'm baiting minnows, right in the middle of the kayak. And then I have my glove handy in case I get a bigger fish that I need the glove to hold on to. I have my pliers in the middle and then everything else is safely stored away. So if you're set up right and you don't hook yourself, you can have a lot of fun fishing out of a kayak. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Dickies, guaranteed workwear since 1922. Lucky Strike, more fish bite with a Lucky Strike. Are you still there, fish? He is. Okay. Got some weight to it. Nice head shakes. Nice walleye again, eating size. See the way they're just thrashing on the surface? Isn't that neat? I'm gonna see if I can grab them so you can see that bait. And he's got just the back hook, the treble hook in his mouth. Look it, isn't that a classic view? Look at the minnow still flapping in his mouth. I should give it to him, you know, as a bonus. 